This is the book summary of Copywriting Secrets by Jim Edwards. Let's get right into it. What is copywriting? The best copywriting occurs when people don't realize it's copy because it's interesting to them. Your content addresses their fears. It speaks to their desires. It uses the words they use. It feels like a conversation with a friend or a trusted advisor. People love to buy. They hate to be sold. People have more things fighting for their attention. It's important to understand this with your copy. In today's world, you must use a lot more curiosity to stop people in their tracks and get them to pay attention to you. Also, there's a lot less build up before you must get to the point. People have hopes fears and dreams. The better you understand the people in your market, the more money you'll make and the happier they're going to be because you can communicate better with them. One man's journey with sales copy. Nobody is born knowing how to write great sales copy. Learning to write great copy can change your life. It just takes practice. Read the classics of advertising and copywriting. Without a strong why, people don't buy. And here are the 10 reasons that people buy. To make money, to save money, to save time, to avoid effort, to escape mental or physical pain, to get more comfort, to achieve greater cleanliness or hygiene to attain better health, to gain praise, to feel more loved, and to increase their popularity or social status. These 10 things are the pegs people use to justify their buying. These are their why. It's like a tarp. If you tie it down with one point, with one why, it's going to blow everywhere. But if you tie it to several, then it stays where you want it. Ask yourself how your product or service fulfills each of these reasons to buy. Come up with 5 to 10 answers to each one. It can be really effective to find that one effective angle that nobody else is using. Nobody cares about you and your sales copy. People don't care about the salesperson or their kids, whether they're having a bad day, etc. Watch out for words like I, me, my, we, or ours. It indicates you're focusing on yourself. Try to reword it to focus on them. The most valuable skill you'll ever learn. You should learn to write sales copy yourself because you might need it fast. You could be held hostage. You won't know if, you won't know if theirs is good or not. And you likely have to make changes if someone else does it. The ability to write copy spills over and helps you sell more generally. You have to practice writing copy every single day. The good thing about copywriting online is that you get near instant feedback. Pay attention to the copy that makes you spend money. We're usually members of our own target market. The number one single most important piece of sales copy ever. The purpose of a headline is simple. To get people to stop what they're doing and start reading or watching whatever it is you put in front of them. The secret of a great headline is that it connects emotionally with your target audience, usually around a fear or desire. Sometimes a great headline will get less clicks, but a higher quality of click. Headlines are how you stop people in their tracks and make them pay attention. Develop a swipe file to get formulas for headlines. In nature, when one animal sounds a warning, all animals hear it and be careful. 
but they only relax when their own species gives the all clear. This relates to headings that are like warnings. Like if you sound a warning, people are receptive to that is the point. The author often spends 50% of his time writing the headline. And here is about 15 headline formulas. I might not read these out. But if you want to read them, I think you can pause this and read them. Next one. It's never one size fits all. A common mistake is not segmenting traffic and giving the wrong message to the wrong audience. Somebody who is on your email list or follows you on social media and knows your name is a hot source. Just tell them about your product. Someone who is looking for a solution to a problem but they don't know about you yet is a warm source. Focus on the solutions that they're already looking for. Someone who doesn't even realize there's a solution out there but knows they have a problem is a cold source. Focus on the problem they know they have. You've got to get in sync with the conversation they want to have first so you can steer them towards the solution you're selling. Facebook is good for this. So is ClickFunnels because you can make different landing pages for different segments. The cold market is usually the largest, so if you can connect with them, that's where you can start making big sales. Meet Fred, your ideal customer. It's important to know who you're writing to. This is where building an avatar comes in. Let's call them Fred. You need to know the words he uses and what's going on inside his head so you can join in that conversation. Use psychographics, which means what's going on in their heads, as well as demographics. And there's three levels. There's niches, sub-niches, and micro-niches. And the point of this chapter is partly that it's good to focus as narrowly as possible on the micro niche. Most of us do better with a few feet wide and a mile deep rather than a few deep, a few feet deep and a mile wide. Narrower focus is better. Fred stands for fears, results, expectations and desires. People buy what they want, not what they need. Some of them what they want, and in th but then include what they need. And there's another model here, PQR2, which is problems, questions, roadblocks, and results. I probably prefer this one. And what you need to do is realize that people, there's like a chasm, and people are on one side of the chasm with their problems, questions, and roadblocks and they want to get to the other side, which is the results. And what you do is you build a bridge across the chasm with your copy, and basically, uh, you know, solve their problems, answer their questions, fix their roadblocks, and get them to their results. So you're, you're using the PQR2 that's already in their heads. And these things are what define the niche. The ultimate bullet formula. People don't buy features, they buy benefits. A feature is what something is, a benefit is what something does for you. 4 to 12 good bullets is usually good. Take it a step further and uh, drill down to the meaning of each bullet. That's what connects with people's emotions. Here's the formula. It something so you can no I'll start again it feature so you can benefit 
which means meaning. What really sells people is not what you think. Meaning creates emotion. A powerful why is important because it creates emotion. As soon as you make a statement about what something is or what it does, you then say, which means... Tie your product to love, hate, fear, vanity, pride, longing for, greed, freedom. Why good enough makes you and keeps you poor? A-B split testing is how you improve your copy over time. Never test more than one variable at a time though. Don't reinvent the wheel. Great copy leaves clues. What do they want? What are their fears? Uh, what are their objections to buying either what you sell or what anybody is selling out there? It's all about them, never about you. Don't use big words, jargon, or an acronyms. A confused mind always answers no. Use simple terms, use short sentences, and keep your thoughts well organized and sequential. Write short, personal emails to them as if they're your buddy. What to do if you don't have any testimonials yet? You need proof to make people feel comfortable making the decision to buy from you. Results oriented testimonials are the best. But you can also use ones about you or your company, celebrity endorsements, statistics or even quotes. You can send someone something for free and then ask them to give you a testimonial about it. Three sales formulas that never fail. Problem, agitate, and solve. So you start with a problem, create pain, and then solve the solve the problem with your product. Next, there's a more positive one, which is benefit, benefit, benefit. And the next one is a bit like neurolinguistic programming, where you start the before, then after and then use your product as a bridge. And you can use them in tweets, blog posts, social media updates, email teasers, or even sales conversations. It's all ice cream, but what flavor should I choose? The author thinks video sales letters are the best place to start. Do a headline, insert the video, add a buy button under the video, Add some bullet points, give a guarantee, summarize what they'll get, insert another buy button, closing copy and postscript. So that's basically the structure that he recommends. And you use longer copy to sell higher priced items. But really, you should probably test which works out better, a video or, or a long or short sales letter. So there's 13 parts of an amazing sales letter. And each, the job of each part of the sales letter is move them to the next part, like stepping stones across a stream. You start with the headline, then a shocking statement, define the problem, agitate, solve, use bullets to arouse curiosity, a credibility statement about you, provide proof, Sum up the offer and give the price. Add bonuses and pot sweeteners. Guarantee. Call them to action and postscript. How to write killer email teasers fast. 
99% of the time, the purpose of an email teaser is to get them to click a link in the email and visit a web page. The subject line is like the headline. It's important because if it's not good, no one will read it. Use their name if possible. Then hit them with a shocking statement to wake them out of their hypnosis. Then hit them with three or four bullet points to arouse curiosity. Then tell them to click the link. Close with, I'll see you over there, and your name. Talk to them like a friend, with quick messages and familiar language. The hardest draft you'll ever write. The hardest draft you'll write is the first draft. Use your swipe file to make it easier. Once you've got something down, it's much easier to improve upon it. Try to get the first draft done as quickly as possible. Make them more thirsty. Stories make people thirsty, then your sales copy tells them where to go buy a drink. Stories can be actual stories, case studies, examples, or the three M's of content. And the three M's of content are dispelling a myth, misconception, or mistake. The good thing is you can give content without giving away all the stuff you want people to pay for. Try talking through Try taking through people through, that's wrong, uh, try taking people through a future scenario to make them thirsty. Teaching is stories and content, selling is sales copy. To make them thirsty with content, give them something for free that naturally leads to a purchase. Or tell them what they should do and then sell them the way to do it. Or teach them all the steps leading up to what you want them to purchase. Or teach them the hard way to do something without your product or service. Love me, hate me, there's no money in the middle. The people who hate you will still pay attention and buy something from you. Have a strong opinion and stick with it. But don't be afraid to change it if the world proves you need to change. Be a consistent character for the people who pay attention to you. Oh damn, I got to have that. There's four parts to the profitable promise formula. Identify the hurdle in people's minds to get what they want. Usually it will be some action that needs to get taken. Identify the prize or what that person wants by taking that action. Answer the question, when will I get what I want? And four, you need to eliminate the excuse that's holding them back. For example, how do you use online dating sites like Match.com to find the love of your life within 30 days, even if you've failed at online dating before? Put lipstick on the pig. This is basically some ways to check your copy if it's not working properly. Look at the headline. Is the offer clear? Is there a clear reason to buy now? Is there an emotional driver in the copy? Do your bullets suck? Is the price appropriate? Are you using the right graphics and colors? What about proof? Should I join the dark side? And this is about using negative, but there's a good and a bad way to go negative. The good way is to meet people in their internal conversation. Talk about their problems, mistakes, fears, and enemies. For example, are you dealing with problem customers? The bad way is to do it like an attack ad. You can't attack people, but you can attack behavior. Stealth closes, the secrets to selling without selling. You give some value, then you say, by the way, and tell them about something and give a link. So this is something you can use in social media posts and things like that. Like, so you're kind of selling, but going under the radar. The hired gun. Nobody knows your product as well as you do, 
so you're uniquely suited to write copy for it. It can be helpful to hire someone to critique your copy once you've written it though. The Magic Desk Satisfying other people's wants is how you satisfy your wants. You can do a visualization to increase empathy and learn about your target customer. And high levels of empathy means better copy. The one and only purpose of an online ad. The only purpose of an online ad is to get the right people to click your link. Curiosity is the number one way you get people to do that. If you don't know when to start, then if you don't know where to start, then ask a question such as, are you tired of something? Would you like to something? Or have you ever wanted to something? And the author thinks that ADA, attention, interest, desire, and action, is bullshit. So that's interesting. Uh, he says instead you only need three steps. The attention grabber, usually with a headline or an image. Create curiosity. And have a call to action. It's a numbers game. Usually you have to do 10 to 50 tries to make an ad profitable. Successful advertisements online fail over time. Even if they're good at one point, they will fail eventually. So it's advertising is a never ending process. You can't fish without a hook. A hook is an angle or slant that you use to create intense curiosity with your target audience. They are often hidden one sentence stories or angles, such as X pizza delivery guy shows you a weird trick to become a best selling author in a weekend, or mortgage loan broker blows the whistle on industry corruption, or from dead broke with a heart condition and living in a trailer park with no heat and a leaky roof to internet millionaire. Use hooks in your headline, first paragraph, stories, ads, social media posts, memes, and infographics. Create your own swipe file. All good copywriters maintain a swipe file. Add something to your swipe file when something grabs your attention, particularly if you actually buy something. Polish your sales copy. Can you scan your copy? Videos should have subtitles because people watch them on silent. The slippery slide test is where someone who starts reading feels like reading the whole thing and splashing into the money pool with no issues. And lastly, everything else you need to know about copywriting. Intention is what makes copy different from other types of writing. You're trying to get them to take action. Irresistible copy makes people believe they're going to get the result they want from what you're selling. You can create the perfect offer before you actually create the product. Get good at copy fast with practice. Sexify it with emotion. You can reuse copy because you want to have a consistent message. The best words to use are the ones that they use. And paragraphs should only be two to four lines long. For example, just one or two sentences.